you guys seen this this is pretty interesting right regarding tucker carlson so all the noise around Tucker Carlson post um, Fox News exit has been a bit weird because I've heard some reports say that he's technically still um, employed by Fox. They're still paying him, which means that he can't essentially jump onto another platform and become a host on there. There might be a non-compete clause in his contract, blah, blah, blah. But whatever the case may be, one thing is for sure, like him or lump him, that guy's a big deal. No one's going to make this kerfuffle about somebody, especially a news presenter or news anchor, if they weren't just some any guy. So clearly the guy's got power, the guy's got clout, the guy's got viewership, he's got an audience and, you know, he's that guy, he is him. So because he is him, everyone's kind of clamoring to get him signed on their platform because, you know, the Fox exit, everyone saw the stats and the viewership numbers he was bringing there. So people were just looking at the maps and thinking, especially the way the culture's going, he's going to be prime time. He's going to definitely bring the eyes and the attention on your platform. We saw the Valuetainment and the Patrick Bet David sending him an offer and stuff, whatever. But out of nowhere, it feels like out of the blue, so, you know, Patrick Bet David, I would have thought a streaming platform would have jumped on him, like a Rumble or like a Kick or something. All these other platforms you would imagine that he would have jumped on, right? But out of the blue, it still feels like out of nowhere, he appears on Twitter and says, we're back. And this is his first message posted directly on Twitter. It's now got 5.2 million views. It's a three minute video of Tucker Carlson explaining what his next step's going to be on Twitter directly. Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. You often hear people say the news is full of lies, but most of the time that's not exactly right. Much of what you see on television or read the New York Times is in fact true in the literal sense. It could pass one of the media's own fact checks. Lawyers would be willing to sign off on it. In fact, they may have, but that doesn't make it true. It's not true. At the most basic level, the news you consume is a lie, a lie of the stealthiest and most insidious kind. Fact have been withheld on purpose, along with proportion and perspective. You are being manipulated. How does that work? Let's see. If I tell you that a man has been unjustly arrested for armed robbery, that is not, strictly speaking, a lie. He may have been framed. At this point, there's been no trial, so no one can really say. But if I don't mention the fact that the same man has been arrested for the same crime six times before, am I really informing you? No, I'm not. I'm misleading you. And that's what the news media are doing in every story that matters every day of the week, every week of the year. What's it like to work in a system like that? After more than 30 years in the middle of it, we could tell you stories. The best you can hope for in the news business at this point is the freedom to tell the fullest truth that you can. But there are always limits. And you know that if you bump up against those limits often enough, you will be fired for it. That's not a guess. It's guaranteed. Every person who works in English language media understands that. The rule of what you can't say defines everything. It's filthy, really, and it's utterly corrupting. You can't have a free society if people aren't allowed to say what they think is true. Speech is the fundamental prerequisite for democracy. That's why it's enshrined in the first of our constitutional amendments. Amazingly, as of tonight, there aren't many platforms left that allow free speech. The last big one remaining in the world, the only one, is Twitter, where we are now. Twitter has long served as the place where our national conversation incubates and develops. Twitter is not a partisan site. Everybody's allowed here, and we think that's a good thing. And yet, for the most part, the news that you see analyzed on Twitter comes from media organizations that are themselves thinly disguised propaganda outlets. You see it on cable news. You talk about it on Twitter. The result may feel like a debate, but actually the gatekeepers are still in charge. We think that's a bad system. We know exactly how it works, and we're sick of it. Starting soon, we'll be bringing a new version of the show we've been doing for the last six and a half years to Twitter. We we'll bring some other things too, which we'll tell you about. But for now, we're just grateful to be here. Free speech is the main right that you have. Without it, you have no others. See you soon. <laughs> I love the fact that he's now trying to position himself as the truth teller. Whenever someone else says, hey, they're all lying, I'm telling the truth, be suspicious of everybody. 
No one's telling you the complete truth. That's the fact of it. You have to kind of, unfortunately, gather information from various different places and make your own decision or come to some point of view or use your critical thinking, you know, um, methods or whatever it may be to come to some sort of conclusion. But the idea that one person's going to tell you the absolute truth and still you right is just ridiculous. But just from a purely content creation point of view, it's really interesting to see that now Twitter has kind of positioned itself to a place where they are going to be competing with a YouTube. They'll be competing with a TikTok, with an Instagram, not only just on just the social media side of things on like, oh, this is a text-based social media. No, and we're going to be the home for everything. So if you want to write something, if you want to post a picture, if you want to do a live stream, if you want to do a spaces, like recently, this is a new addition on Twitter that, I've, that I didn't see before where they now got the sidebar here, has all the spaces of people that you're kind of connected to hosting at the moment or where they're sitting in on. So you can quickly click it on desktop because usually spaces, you can only listen to them on flipping your phone. So that's pretty sick. So clearly they are positioning themselves that way. So what I've also heard from them, I think he kind of posted, um, Elon posted it as a reply as to what they're going to be doing in terms of splits. Somebody asked a question um, underneath Tucker's post here called Ed Krasenstein. And they said, you're right about everything you said, but the platform, um, but the problem, sorry, you're right about everything that you said, but the problem is that you are just as guilty as those that you accuse of doing those things. Exactly what I said. And how many times have we set the narrative about telling all the facts? You tell the facts that you want to use for your narrative while leaving the expulsory facts out. Are you willing to admit that? And then Elon Musk replied and said the following. On this platform, unlike the one-way street of broadcast, uh, people are able to interact, critique and refute whatever he or anyone has to say, which is very true. And of course, anything misleading will get community notes, which is a really good feature. Anytime you put out some flipping nonsense, it can get community noted where somebody can basically put like a box under your tweet that says, hey, this is actually the facts. It's sort of like a... Um, it reminds me of like a fat checker type of thing. It continues. Um, Elon's response. He says, I also want to be clear that we have not signed a deal of any kind whatsoever because the rumors were first that Tucker signed a deal. And he's like, no, we haven't signed a deal. Tucker is, sub is subject to the same rules and reward and content, rewards and content of all content created, which is again, something, you know, say what you want about Elon. But the fact that he's trying to democratize social media is sick. Like, you know, if you want a verification, you pay for it. You pay $9 or $8. Celebrities have to pay 8 or $9 too, unless the ones he obviously paid for. But everybody gets treated the same. Same thing with this. So whatever content or whatever kind of, um, you know, um, money arrangement they've got with content creators is going to be the same across the board. Whatever deal Tucker gets, I get, anyone else gets, which is sick. Rewards means subscriptions and advertising revenue share. Still working out the software needed for the latter, which is a function of how many people subscribe and the advertising views associated with this content. I hope that many others, particularly from the left, also choose to be content creators on this platform. That's what I want to see, especially from the American side of things. I really want to see that healthy debate because we have a lot of that in the UK. For like it or not, I think we have a, a fair amount of people on either side of the aisle, um, whether it comes to conservative or if it comes to more liberal people, kind of debating openly about certain topics. But I feel like for whatever reason in America, the maybe, you know, the left and the right kind of live on their own kind of platforms and, you know, they don't really engage or interact with other people. And I think that's kind of necessary for healthy debate. So that will be cool to see. Most likely it won't happen because a lot of these guys are going to get butt hurt that Tucker Carlson's on Twitter and he's being sort of like welcomed with open arms and not going to like it. But I feel like this is going to be the best place to kind of do that thing. So I liked what he said there. And I think Elon had another update also about it regarding the splits for content creators, which I thought was interesting here. Um, oh, yeah, this is it. What did you say? No, there's another thing. He said something about the splits. I think I don't do I have it here. Something about the 80. Oh, what was it? I think that the splits was something like, considering that like subscriptions, if I'm not mistaken. The idea I think of it was something along the lines of um, you keep all the revenue from subscriptions or from whatever it may be for the first year. And then after the fact, Twitter only takes 10%. 
which is pretty crazy because I think every other platform is like half or something or sometimes you know 40 but them only taking 10% and leaving you to get the whole entire first year free is pretty wild um, so that's going to be pretty interesting to see how that kind of pans out um, in the long term for content creators going forward but I like it man it's nice to have a bit of competition out there different platform uh, maybe the content maybe me even I'm thinking the stuff that I put out on Twitter might be specific for Twitter it might not be just the same thing you clip on YouTube and you throw on there that might be an avenue to go down the ways i'm not really too sure but eager to see how it plays out eager to see how that plays out <laughs>